All right, so looking at section 9.2, you're going to see a lot of similarities between these two, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, I want you to make sure that you get the basics down. Like I said, there's so many similarities between how the hyperbola is done and how you find the pieces of information of it and the ellipse that we've already done. There's no reason to, to hit this stuff over and over and over and over and over again. All right, so first things first, let's look at the definition of a hyperbola. A hyperbola is the set of points in a plane, the difference of whose distances from two fixed points called the foci is a constant. Not as just a constant, but it is a, it's constant all the time. What that means is this. If I were to come in here and pick this point right here, let me get a different color so it'll stand out. Uh, this point right here. And then I measured the distance from this focus to that point. Imagine it's a straight line. And I measured the distance from this point to this focus. If I take this as D1, distance 1, this is distance 2. Distance 1 minus distance 2 is going to equal some number that is a constant. It's going to be constant for this point and this point and this point and this point, that point, any point on either one of these branches. And that's what we call the two different parts. This is one branch, this is another branch. But any point, any of these points that you pick, if you measure the distance from one vertex to that point and subtract the distance to the closer vertex to that same point, you're going to get the same number every single stinking time. That's the definition of what a hyperbola is. That's where it comes from. Now, if you'll remember, with an ellipse, those distances added together were a constant. Here, subtracted they're a constant. It's always going to be the longer distance minus the shorter distance is going to be a constant. So that's where the actual hyperbola itself comes from. That mathematical definition. Now the standard forms for the equation of a hyperbola are these two right here x squared over a squared minus, there's the big difference right there, y squared over b squared equals 1, or y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Now, these pictures right here go along with those two equations. So if you want to write those down right there next to those equations, that, that'll be fine. Uh, I want you to see that with the first one, we have what's called, what we did call a major axis, it's now called the transverse axis. It's the main axis of our figure. And in this case, that first one, the x squared over a squared was first. And in this one, the y squared over a squared was first. Now, I need to clarify something here. In the previous section we talked about in the with the ellipse, a squared was always the larger of the two numbers. Not the case with this. In this case, the a squared is whatever number is on the bottom of the positive term. Notice it's x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. So essentially this second term is treated as a negative because of the minus. So whichever one is the positive term What's under that is your a squared. And it is going to determine, whichever one's positive is going to determine which way the transverse axis goes. And if this one was a horizontal transverse axis, this one, because the y squared being positive, is a vertical transverse axis. Now, And that's what we're talking about right here. It's 16A and 16B there. The vertices, once again, are A units from the center, and the foci are C units from the center. Now, for both of these equations, 
b squared equals c squared minus a squared, or more specifically and more usefully to us, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Notice here, instead of subtracting a squared minus b squared, we're actually adding those two. Now, keep in mind, the reason why is where is the focus? Well, remember, if this length right here is your A, for that C, that focus to be outside of that, you're going to have to be larger than A. That's why we're adding the B instead of subtracting the B like we were before. Remember, we subtracted the B squared because it had to be inside of A. Here, we want the focus outside of the vertices, so we're going to add the B squared. All right, so easy way to remember this, when the x squared term is preceded by a plus sign or no sign out here in front, the transverse axis is horizontal. When the y squared term is preceded by a plus sign, otherwise being the first term without a minus in front of it, then the transverse axis is going to be vertical. All right, so let's do an example. Uh, find the vertices and locate the foci for each of the following hyperboles with a given equation. So once again, nothing added or subtracted the x squared or the y squared, so it's going to be centered at the origin. So the center is 0, 0. And A, let me change this here. Let me write center. And so it doesn't get confused with the C we're going to find later. So A squared equals 16, B squared equals 9, and then we said C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, and 16 plus 9 gives us 25, so C is going to equal 5. So now to find the vertices, is this a horizontal or a vertical transverse axis. Well, with the x squared being the positive term, it's going to be a side-to-side -side or a horizontal transverse axis. So we're going to add the a to the x term here. So our vertices are going to end up being at 4, 0 and at negative 4, 0. Now, with our foci, we're going to go the same direction, x directions from the center, but we're going to go c units. So the foci are going to be at 5, 0 and negative 5, 0. So there's the information they're looking for. All right, now what I want you to do is I want you to try this part B here. See what you can come up with on it. And I'm going to show you the answer for you to check your work, but I want you to pause the video, give it a try, and I'll show you the answers in one, two, all right, so here's the work. Uh, the center turned it out turned out to be zero zero again. Uh, vertex zero three zero negative three plus or minus a from the center. Now we want to change the y value because the y is the first the positive term here. So that means we have a vertical transverse axis, or the y is changing. So we're going to add and subtract from y. With well, this one over here, because of the x squared being first. That one we were adding and subtracting from x. So because the x squared here was first, we have plus or minus the x term. And over here with the y squared term being first, we add and subtract from the y. And then of course we found the c, and it's plus or minus 5. So we get the foci are 0, 5, and 0, negative. All right, so example two, 
It says find the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola with foci at 0, negative 3, and 0, 3, and vertices at 0, negative 2, and 0, 2. So remember, <clears throat> standard form for this is going to be x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, or y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1, depending on what? Depending on what's changing. Is it a vertical transverse axis or a horizontal? Now what do we have here? Well, if we go from 0, negative 3 to 0, 3, what changed? Well, my y value changed, of course. So that means if I'm going from one foci to the other and y value changes, it's going to be a vertical transverse axis. So this is the one I'm using right here. I'm going to use this one. And now I need to find out what A is, what B is, and what C is. And I know the center is going to be at 0, 0, because right here we can see negative 3 and 3, that's 6 units apart, divide 6 by 2, and if I subtract 3 from the larger number, I'm going to get 0, 0, and if I add 3 to the larger, to the smaller point, I'm going to get 0, 0, so the center is at 0, 0. Now, that's not something they've asked for, they just want the standard form of the equation. That's something I need to find, though, because now what do I know? I know that my center is at 0, 0. How far do I go to get to 0, 3? I go 3 units. If I go 3 units to get to the focus, that means that C equals 3. Now, how far do I go from the center to get to the vertices? Well, if I go from 0, 0 to 0, 2, I've gone 2 units. That means that A is 2 because I go A units to get from the center to one of the vertices in both directions. So if I know that C is 3 and A is 2, then I can find out what B is using that equation we've already learned. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C squared is going to be 9. A squared is going to be 4 and I'm looking for B squared. So I'll just do my algebra and solve for this. I'll move that 4 to the other side. I'm going to end up with 5 is equal to B squared. Well, that means that B is equal to the square root of 5. So I'm going to use this equation right here, and I'm going to plug those values in that I need. So I've got Y squared over my A that I found squared minus x squared over my b squared that I found. Well, if b is the square root of 5 and I square it, I'm going to get 5. And that equals 1. And that's all there is to it. There's not a lot more really to this. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in class if you've got questions. Uh, we'll talk about asymptotes of this thing and we'll talk about how to graph these. That's going to be the big thing, but I actually want to do that in class. So that'll be all of the video for being able to get you started on the work in class.